Hello everyone, Toby from Ableton Drummer here. I want to show you a new device for the SPDS6 Max for Live device to use with Ableton Live. So a lot of people are using the SPDS6 now for triggering sounds in Ableton Live, so they are not using the sounds on the SPDS X, they're just sending MIDI to Ableton Live and using this chain selector concept via zones. So having different drum racks here on one track, but they can be selected via the chain selector so they can be automated. And this way you have a clean, nice one track only where all your drum sounds are sitting. If you're not familiar with this concept, have a look on my course on the SPDSX with Ableton Live, where all of this is explained. Cool. So um, I created something where Max for Live device, which actually, actually uh, lets you access the chain selector. So changing the sounds here via your plus and minus buttons, yeah? So I have three chains set up here and one, two, three, if I'm going up and down on my SPDS X, it will represent the name. I can have the color changing. So if I set this to red, for example, yeah, I can see the color of the chain here in the device as well. And this way I can be quite flexible and I can even have like the chain selection being represented on my SPDSX. So let us do this. So you need to set up a second track here to being able to receive the MIDI from the Max for Live device and select this track as an input. So this MIDI is now being routed from this track into this track here. And you want to set this to the SPDSX channel 10 and this way you are sending the program changes from this device here now into this track going to the SPDSX and you can see it's changing the SPDSX here and because I don't have any um, more chains here it's showing me like a red warning here. So let's set this uh, up for the stuff I got on here on my SPDSX from kit 20 on so what you need to do always is they need to be in a row all the chains need to be in a row so starting at 20 for example then going to 21 22 or 50 51 52 or 58 59 60 uh, 59 60 yes so always going one up i can change the names here midi one midi two and midi three for example so now i'm using like custom names i set up in the spdsx so if i'm now changing stuff here um, i need to press refresh once ah no i need to change the start where um, my chain selector and my zones are starting now so i need to set this up to 20 as i'm starting on value 20 here now and now it works yeah cool so i'm now have vice versa control here so the midi is being sent from the plus and minus buttons to this device and if i change stuff on this device it's being sent back to my SPDS X. I can MIDI map this wheel here or even the buttons. I can key map those as well. Yeah, so I can use different uh, MIDI, external MIDI controllers now to control my devices here. So there are two devices, they are doing the same, uh, but one is for Ableton Live 10 and one is for Ableton Live 11. Um, you need to establish a connection between those two devices. This device always needs to uh, sit right in front of the instrument rack. And if you place it after you created the instrument rack, it will work fine. It will establish a connection automatically. If there is no connection, you need to press refresh once. So this device is looking for the instrument rack after and is doing the connection to the chain selector automatically. And this will be stored and saved with your Ableton Live set. So if you're opening this up after you save this, um, this will be restored automatically. 
So no, nothing to worry about on a gig or in a live situation. Yes, okay, so I hope some people can make use of this device. Uh, follow the links in the video description to check it out. And um, if it's for you or not, there's more info uh, available. Obviously, a home manual, online manual is available as well as there are a lot of other devices. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a whole course on like using the SPDSX with Ableton Live um, available as well. Cool. Have fun drumming and making music. Cheers. Bye.